having a unique and excellent flavor and aroma has still not reached majority of the people even within the country most of the people who consume passion fruit and its processed product have not come across the fruit yet otherwise which would have captured the attention and boost the sales and industry this week in the Ghanaian farmer we are back to Sono Ghana the biggest producer and processor of passion fruit and citrus here in the eastern region we are going for a quick breather when we come back the farm director Mr Bernard Barney would be joining us to tell us what activity is happening this week on the farm all throughout the entire month what will be happening on the farm do you know how to identify when your passion fruit is ripe what is the color like what should i see to be able to determine my passion fruit is ready this and many more are we going to be discussing right after this break share your thoughts and your views with me wherever you're watching us from this is the Ghanaian farmer my name is Enyunam. i'll be right back after this stay tuned Thanks for staying. If you're just tuning in, you're watching the Ghanaian farmer. My name is Anyona, and standing next to me is my very good friend Bernard Sando Bani, the farm director here in Sono, Ghana. Thank you very much, Bernard, for having us. Welcome, mm. I am mm -hmm. a Ghanaian farmer. Yes, I told you I'll be back <laughs> during the harvest time, and I'm impressed with what I'm seeing. A lot of activities, people are busy carrying crate of passion fruit loading the truck whoa guys you are busy how long is this activity going to last for we are very happy to have you on the farm again mm -hmm. it was a nice time um the last time you came around mm -hmm. it's even going to be better mm -hmm. so we are presently uh setting fruits and harvesting okay and we envisage to carry on mm. until uh somewhere in december okay just to refresh the memory of those who might not have watched our previous video, Sono Ghana, what are you known for? Sono, as a brand, mm. simply stands for quality mm -hmm. and uniqueness. Mm. Unique in the sense that passion fruit is exotic, mm. it's a very complex crop to grow. Yeah. But Sono has taken upon itself to deliver passion mm. to the doorsteps of our precious customers. Mm. That puts us in a very good position as a unique company in Ghana and the rest of West Africa. Oh, okay. Now tell me, if someone walks into Sono, especially to buy uh, passion, what varieties am I going to have? So at present, we are farming the yellow passion okay. as well as the purple passion. We have uh, both uh, up for sale. Mm. And so if you walk in here, mm -hmm. you have uh, these options to choose from. Okay. Do these both varieties have the same maturity uh, growth? Um, we have specialized in uh, this variety of purple passion. It's slightly different in terms of the um, number of months mm -hmm. uh, that you need for it to come into maturity. Okay. With the yellow passion, you need nothing less than nine months to start realizing passion. Yeah. With the purple passion that we grow, mm -hmm. you are assured of fruits just in six months, mm -hmm. between five to six months. Okay. And uh, depending on how good your systems, mm -hmm. your agronomic uh, uh, systems are, mm -hmm. you can even start producing at just three to four months. Now, mentioning or talking about agronomic practices, because we've already previously talked you know, about soil and all that, tell me some of the agronomic practices that Sono adhere to get this quality of 
passion with your teaching? Great. Um, I will talk about three very important things that is not very usual. Okay. Uh, and that is very important in uh, producing this uh, purple variety. Right. First and foremost, mm -hmm. you need to have your hands on what we call the pruning. Okay. Passion is a vine that grows every minute. Yeah. And when it's growing, it releases shoots on the side of the growing vine. Yeah. These shoots grow and release flower buds okay. on which you get the passion fruit forming. Yeah. Because we want to enhance the quality of the fruits that we produce, mm -hmm. we have our hands on the vines mm -hmm. to reduce the foliage in order to channel resources in the plants mm -hmm. to what we want. Okay. So pruning is key. Secondly, you need to have a unique fertilize, uh, fertilizer regime. Mm. You can't just throw any fertilizer on this plant and get the results. Okay. You need to be intentional when you apply the fertilizer, the type, the rates, mm. and then how you even place it, and then the consistency mm. to get the quality That's that I explained mm. uh, initially. Yeah. Thirdly, you need to have a very skilled workforce which means your procedures your policies your uh, training regime must be really up to scratch to ensure that the people understand exactly what to do and are able to detect when things are not in place to implement what you have discussed these are very key if you need to uh, succeed okay that's great now let's talk briefly about introduction of the passion into our system the the nursery or the offshoot that you use yes. to multiply before we see this huge plantation where did you get it from so uh, i told you already um that this variety of passion fruit was brought in from south africa okay. and so that is where our source is okay, okay. we have to a large extent, yeah. acclimatize the variety mm -hmm. to um, the Ghana system. And yeah. so we have Ghana babies, mm -hmm. if you like, of this variety of passing fruits. Right. Okay, <laughs> I see. Interesting. We have Ghana babies, in case you don't know, then that's it. Now, let's talk also about when you introduce the, the nursery into the field itself, and you're going through this process of agronomy practices that you mentioned, waiting for the four, five, six months to do your harvesting. Now, tell me what sort of activities goes on the entire time whilst you're waiting for harvesting. I asked this because the last time we came, we didn't see these bountiful fruits we are seeing today. It was just shooting one, one. Now, between the period we came and now, what were some of the things you were doing? Very important and very key um, to note. Yeah. So, once the passion is planted from the raised cuttings, yeah. you need to have your irrigation ongoing. Mm -hmm. Very important to supply minerals yeah. that we have applied okay. through our fertilization mm -hmm. for the roots to have access to them. And also have moisture mm -hmm. in order to carry on metabolic activities mm -hmm. in the vines. Mm -hmm. That is very key. So that has been ongoing since we put the vines in the ground. Mm -hmm. That is one. Number two, I spoke about the pruning, yeah. which is very key. And that starts once the vines come up, uh, up to the downwire level. Yeah which is about uh, 40 centimeters okay. high. Okay. You need to start training the vine, okay. the complete vine, yeah. vertically on the downline. Mm. So we call that training. Okay. Very key okay. in uh, bringing us to where you see today. Okay. Once you have the vine going on the downline, mm -hmm. you terminate at a point and then redirect the side shoots yeah. that come from the vertical uh, vine yes. onto the vert uh, onto the horizontal from the horizontal line onto the vertical, the vertical yeah. vines and then you train that one also up 
This is the unique thing. Once the vine starts growing vertically, it starts releasing shoots at certain intervals. So at every interval, it gives you a shoot that also grows independently. Once it is growing, it releases flower buds that will now grow, turn into flowers, get pollinated, form fruits, and start growing. So these important activities must take place in phases in order for you to realize uh, what you are seeing now. Like I have mentioned, the issue of training and getting quality workforce who understand what it means mm -hmm. to carry on our activities rightly yes. and also to be able to spot and identify mm -hmm. when things are going wrong okay. is very key. Okay. Now you mentioned pollination. Then I'll come to the staff that work at Sono. Good. Pollinating, how do you go about it? Do you use your hand to carry from here here? Or there are specific things you put in place to ensure natural pollination? Very important. We um, believe that climate change is real yes. and we must all as farmers introduce um, important interventions okay. that leaves the environment as clean as possible exactly. for biodiversity to thrive and for humans yeah. also to move on uh, uh, once we live on this earth. Yeah. And so for that reason we prioritize uh, insect pollination. Okay very key okay. in our operations here. Right. That is not to say we don't introduce any human uh, efforts in okay. our pollination, yeah. but it is very minimal. Mm -hmm. That happens, the human elements uh, start just when the flower set begins. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we do that a while, okay. and then once we see the flowers are getting many, you can mm -hmm. see thousands, <laughs> millions yeah. of fruits, yeah. you cannot hire enough people mm -hmm. to be able to pollinate. Mm -hmm. One, what we have done is that yeah. we have uh, bee colonies mm -hmm. all over the farm. Mm -hmm. At present, we have uh, at least four boxes per hectare mm -hmm. on the farm. Um, our target is even to do more. Secondly, apart from the boxes where we've introduced bees, we allow them to colonize mm -hmm. and then we nurture them to be in there. We have bee specialists on site okay. who man these bee boxes and ensure that the dangers with bee stings and all that mm. is removed. Mm. So these bees mm -hmm. get used to the flowers okay. and then they go on there and do the pollination for us. So consumers can be assured that we remove anything chemical when it comes to the fruits that they will buy mm. from the shelves mm. and that it is very clean and, and it's very good. Awesome, awesome. Now let's move to the employment that Sono has created yes. here in the Eastern region. Average, how many workers do you have on the farm? Very important. The essence of the Passion Farm is to ensure that we uh, create employment mm. for the indigents of Asamankese to mm. have gainful employment to be able to support themselves right. and their families. Yeah. This is an ongoing activity and we will ensure that this mm -hmm. objective mm -hmm. is grown to a world-class level. Okay. Presently, we have over 260 workers okay. on the 42 hectares mm -hmm. that we are operating on now. Mm -hmm. uh, averagely, uh, about six Mondays mm -hmm. per hectare. Okay. Very, very, very key. Mm -hmm. Uh, pack house inclusive mm -hmm. and and that is massive okay now a lot of people had reached out to me after watching our first video about hey, you know, i also want to do passion um how do i go about it and all that how easy or difficult is it for me to go into passion farming and how does sono come in to assist me in my journey S passion fruit farming i will say mm -hmm. is not simple and yet at the same time it's not complex okay. you can go into backyard yeah. passion gardening okay. 
for your own pleasure okay. and also to have bits of fruits yeah. for your family to enjoy. Yeah. So if you have, for instance, a 5x5 five five, uh, or a 4x4 four four meter space yeah. within your um, household, mm -hmm. you can easily turn that into a passion garden. Okay. And that is not difficult to do. Mm. You need to reach out um, uh, to where you can get support mm. with uh, seeds or vines mm. in order to raise your plantlets. Okay. And then you get technical advice mm. on how to prepare the land, mm -hmm. uh, how to raise your uh, ridges, yeah. uh, the irrigation system mm. that you must have in place in order to supply water consistently okay. and get an all year round mm. Uh, blooming yeah. of your vine okay, okay? and then you will be schooled yeah. and you can have periodic engagements yeah. uh, which will make life easy for you okay. that is on the individual side okay. if you want to go commercial exactly. so no individuals and organizations right. who have land available Land that is litigation free mm. and has uh, the ability to support generally good plant growth. Okay. We can have a look mm. and take on from there. Mm. So we are open okay. to going big mm. uh, on passion cultivation with uh, corporations, individuals, communities, mm. chiefs and mm. people mm. who have land to uh, engage in, in the activity. Awesome. Now, lastly, before we go into the, the, the day, which is about harvest, did you see me when I was cutting? <laughs> <laughs> now, for those who want to go into commercial, yes. the sort of recruitment or yes. staff that I need, um, do I need people who have knowledge already about passion farming or I can just go about and handpick people to come and just work in the farm? Which do you recommend as people who have been in this space for long? Great. Um, for partnership, yes. we already are in the business okay. and we have experienced mm. people on site. Mm -hmm. We have students that we have recruited from the universities, okay. trained these people on the rudiments of passion cultivation. Yeah. Yeah. They are resources mm. at our disposal. Mm. We also have individuals who didn't have prior knowledge of yeah. passion cultivation, okay. but with time, they have been trained to understand what it means to grow passion. Okay. These are at our disposal. And so I will sum up by saying you need a mix okay, of um, people, uh, some with some educational background, right. others who you can just pick, right. who have the will okay. and who have energy to learn okay. and take them through and get them to come to a standard. Awesome. Now, after these several weeks of going through different form of activities at yeah. different stages, yes. proud to my harvesting, again, what do I do? When I walk into my field, what should I be looking out for to be getting myself ready for harvesting? Fantastic. Once you start seeing flowers okay. and you begin pollination mm -hmm. at day one mm -hmm. you will need to expect to start picking fruits mm -hmm. between one and 60 days okay. depending on the variety mm -hmm. that you are farming mm -hmm. for our variety yeah. it starts turning once it starts growing mm -hmm. in size mm -hmm. from day one mm -hmm you see the change in size progressively up to about 40 days. Okay. And then the size now stays constant. Okay. Then between 40 mm -hmm. and 45 days, mm -hmm. you see different shades okay. of yellow, mm -hmm light pink mm -hmm. to light purple okay. and then deep purple mm. like I'm holding. Okay. Depending on what you want to use it for, okay. you start harvesting. Okay. 
person before you know that it's ripe has to fall once it falls from the vine then it's fully mature to consume but then it is no once <laughs> Once you see a change in color from green okay. to yellow, light pink, okay. it tells you that it's mature mm. and it's turning purple. Okay. At that point, you can harvest. Mm. Okay. At that point, harvesting can so resume. This is a deep uh, color of the purple, right? Yes. This is sort of yellow, kind of. And this is a light purple. Okay, so... Did I get the colors right? Or yes. Or I have to get extra? Mm -hmm. You are very correct. <laughs> if you can um, come with a, a green one. Okay, this one or this one. So you can see mm -hmm. the change in color. Yes. Let's put this here. No, okay. this, 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 this way. This one goes here. Okay. That way. Yeah. Okay. So you see the first one here? Yes. Has started changing from deep green mm -hmm. to light green sort of. Yes. And then it progresses to a lighter green yellow. Mm -hmm. And then you see a change in the pigments mm -hmm. to light pink. Okay. And then it comes to light purple. Mm. And then you see deep purple. Okay. At any point mm. in this range, passion is ready. is ready for harvesting. For harvesting. Okay. 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 All right. So will all of them be this size? Or there, there can be some that are little small, but they are also ready for harvesting? Yes. Yeah, so just like... Um, mm. We humans, mm -hmm. um, you see, there are people who are extremely uh, bulky, yes. and you see others who also are smallish. Mm -hmm. It's like that for every living thing. Okay. So you don't have a uniform size, right. but then you have a range okay. within which the sizes must mm -hmm. all fall. Mm -hmm. If you see a big diversion, mm -hmm. then there is a problem in some agronomic practice that didn't, didn't come right. Or right. you must look at the variety mm. that you put in the ground. Okay. Now, in Sono, do you sell all your produce in the local market or you export some? We have a mixed uh, uh, sales representation. Okay. So we export some mm -hmm. and we sell some also locally and we juice some as well. Mm. So during the harvest, tell me some of the um, basic things I'll need on the field to do my harvest. So then when I came, this is what they gave me. <laughs> this. What do I need this for? Uh, can't I listen? Then I can't I just use my hand to drag this thing and then I pick my fruit? No, that will not work. Why? Yes. So at maturity, yes. let me explain this. Okay. Normally, when you touch the passion this way, yes. it will come off by itself. Okay. At that point, it's ready to fall. Okay. But then, we need to understand mm -hmm. that this is a formal operation. And all the fruits must go into the processing unit yes. very clean. Okay. And so we avoid the fruits coming down and dropping on the floor. Okay. I told you about processing. Yes. All the fruits that drop mm -hmm. are, root, are, are taken through the processing route. Okay. It's because we assume some minimum contamination mm -hmm. and the heat mm -hmm. and uh, cleaning, thorough cleaning in the factories will turn this around. Okay. But then we go uh, with, we, once we sense a color change, okay. you need to have your baskets, okay. which is what will keep your harvested fruits. Exactly. You need to have your harvesting bags. Okay. You, uh, when you, you, you yes, hiding. so you see them with a bag yes. right in front yes. of uh, them. Yes. You harvest these bags mm -hmm. are washed weekly okay. and we have um, processes mm -hmm. to ensure that we log this mm -hmm. and certify that mm -hmm. it's thoroughly clean. Okay. 
we uh, sterilize our snippers yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and then our baskets are also washed weekly. Okay. So once you have these in place, yes. you hold on yes. to the ripe fruit yes. like this. Yes. And then you snip off from the vine. Okay. And then you trim the stalk okay. to get it as short and as close as possible right. to the fruit. Right. And then you keep it in your harvesting bag. Mm. Once you have a certain weight, mm -hmm. you drop that into the basket and then it is brought into the edge of the farm. Oh, okay. Ready for loading. Okay. Into the truck, then into the farm. And then into the pack house. Okay. What time of the day do I start my harvesting? And then at what time do I stop? Good. Let me make a... Uh, let me sound this warning. Yes. You asked, why can't you just pluck? Yes. This is a vine. Okay. Very tender. Yes. So once you apply a lot of, of pressure, uh -huh. you end up hurting the passion yes. and you, you may kill uh, the vine at that point. Okay. So okay. it's not advisable. Yes. Well, harvesting must start very early in the morning. Latest 6.30 in the morning when the weather is very cool. Mm -hmm. The reason is this. Mm -hmm. The passion fruit has a glossy shining film mm -hmm. around it. Okay. Um, it's meant to protect the fruit mm -hmm. from caving in. Okay. So we prevent a lot of bruises. Yes. That is why we need to harvest from the tree, okay. uh, the vine, yes. and prevent it from falling. Yes. So between 6.30 and 11.30, depending on the weather, yes. you must have carried uh, out your, harvest your harvesting. For the day. If you are not lucky mm -hmm. and the sun descends on you, we advise that yes. you find a shady place okay. within the farm right. to keep the harvested food so that they are not exposed to the direct, to the direct sunlight. Okay. That will ensure that right. your quality is maintained and people will enjoy Good passion. Awesome. Now, among all the colors that you have explained to us, yes. which one do consumers prefer the most? Well, once a passion fruit is matured, mm -hmm. is matured. Okay. so you, you have different shades mm -hmm. of the purple color. Yes. We try to organize them okay. to color match. Okay. But then, the most preferred variety mm -hmm. to consume mm -hmm. as fresh fruits, mm -hmm. obviously, is the purple passion. This one sweeter because of the sucrose content and then the sugars mm -hmm. so you have a very high oh, bricks <laughs> <laughs> um, i'm very happy you are enjoying mm -hmm. the person mm -hmm. so um you have a very um large amount of sucrose mm -hmm. and, and 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 sugars okay. uh, that makes it uh, very good to consume very 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 pleasant indeed because of the sugar and then the flavor describe the passion industry or market in Ghana? I will say that it's very young. Okay. It's not extensively cultivated. Okay. Uh, it's mainly because mm -hmm. it's not native to West Africa okay. and obviously it's not native to Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, we have taken it upon ourselves mm -hmm. to grow the passion industry in Ghana okay. and extend beyond the borders of Ghana. Okay. Watch out for Sono because mm -hmm. in the next few years mm -hmm. Passion will become a household fruit in Ghana. in Ghana and in the West Africa region. And the origin will be from...